Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls who are somehow watching this age-restricted show, shame on you. Welcome back to the day that the world changed, day zero. The day when the world turned red in 10 minutes. Introduction, some random guy who you have no care for, smug, completely full of himself, and all the traits of a successful comic writer and reviewer, and the prime example of a despicable lucky cunt. Oh, and how this man relished every minute of his self-centered ways and joyful life. Even though his real name isn't truly important, for the sake of the story, we'll just call our smug writer Shakespeare, a name that will later be given. Our story takes place at a coffee shop in London, where the coffee is terrible, overpriced, and where the Wi-Fi is free. Utterly the perfect place for smug fucks like Shakespeare here. Shakespeare relishing in all his luck and tasteless glory, and that's the theme of today's tale of terror. Luck. And the journey of a lucky man in a world that's about to show its true colors. And how it all began for Shakespeare when noticing a nice piece of ass walking by him, bending over and capturing the attention of our writer. And how a man's fixation would quickly turn to confusion with a sinister voice and a facial marking that will forever be burned into Shakespeare's mind. And how that confusion turned to absolute terror when seeing the woman taking a pin from the ground and jamming it into a man's eye. Much like everyone else in the coffee shop, there was shock, confusion, a moment where Shakespeare was struggling with the reality of the situation. And that day, when it all began, was a day where Shakespeare learned two things about himself when seeing the carnage unfold. One, after the years of speculating himself as some sort of hero in a situation similar to this. No, that day was when Shakespeare learned that he was no hero, but a coward who didn't hesitate on fleeing from the coffee shop instead of trying to save lives. His instincts as prey had gotten the better of him, which is what saved his life. And two, all his friends were right about him. Shakespeare was in fact lucky. The very moment when setting foot outside into the London streets, a world painted with blood and spilt guts, the screaming, the laughter in the air, and the parade of murder and raping that filled the streets, and the gore, the physical trauma displayed right before his eyes, and was not what Shakespeare imagined. Funny, how he had even wrote about gore billions of times, superheroes punching right through criminals and stuff, assuming that he was desensitized to the worst of it. But when seeing gore in real life, people's pinkish bloody insides, gore was weird. That day, Shakespeare could not comprehend what was happening, his mind still trying to find a rational explanation for all this while people around him were being murdered and raped, or the ones who were murdering and raping. Was this an act of terrorism? Was London being attacked? Or was it a violent protest? tasteless street art, or perhaps Shakespeare was caught in a film shoot with special effects. Despite all the ridiculous theories coursing through Shakespeare's mind, he knew by seeing all the carnal pleasure and violence, Shakespeare knew that this was it. The end of days, revelations, or whatever they call it. Shakespeare was now a lucky cunt in a world that turned red.
It must have been a few hours before Shakespeare mustered up the courage to do something, hiding from this brave new world. Shakespeare still tried convincing himself that it was all a bad dream. It wasn't until the screams and laughter diminished when Shakespeare tried making contact with the outside world, his attempt to see normality still exists. First, calling his fiance, Jen. No answer. Then try calling his parents. Definitely not his father who picked up. Tried calling his fiance again. Kept ringing. No answer. Try calling his brother at the office, uh, which wasn't him at all. Third time being the charm, Shakespeare tried calling his fiance again, who's probably in the shower or something. Not knowing what was happening in the city. Couldn't hear the phone. And then, an answer which was Jen, but not the same Jen, not his Jen. I think that was when reality finally sunk in for our lucky cunt. This was it, the end of everything. Shakespeare was on autopilot when venturing through the London streets, a few laughs here and some faint screaming there. Shakespeare having no care for his fate. Just walking through the streets, staying lucky, somehow staying unseen. Strange how people always held the fear of being unseen in the world we once knew. Being a man of no importance, and now that things changed, one can now find appreciation in being in a world that doesn't notice you, able to be invisible, of no importance and be able to view this new world in all its glory. Strange, indeed. With the streets being decorated with bodies and tortured victims, all strung up and decorating these streets. It was like Shakespeare was now the tourist in his own country, all the important landmarks being defiled. And when there was a curiosity within Shakespeare, perhaps a spark of life within him, wondering where all the tourists were at, it was an important lesson that Shakespeare learned about this new world, that it's best to avoid questions and leave some things as a mystery. This was before Shakespeare learned to run and to never look back, learning to always look forward. That when Shakespeare finally caught the attention of this new world, fleeing from an infected tourist who had finally noticed him, which resulted with Shakespeare accidentally falling down a flight of stairs into the subway system, that day was the day when Shakespeare stopped asking questions. Like, where is everyone? What happened to London? And what the hell was that sound? Questions and mysteries that should not be solved. There was this horror film that Shakespeare remember watching one of those controversial films that was banned in countries and horror enthusiasts will watch as something of a challenge. One of those films you can only watch once in a lifetime. I think it was called a Serbian film. Described to be the most difficult horror film to watch. Which would forever change your life because of how it didn't hold back on all the scenes of rape and violence. And even though the film pushed the boundaries, Shakespeare thought that the reception to this film was over-exaggerated. Yeah, he watched it all the way through and didn't even feel ruined or damaged as many claim. This film will forever ruin you, as most would say. And yet, he thought that some people were just too sensitive these days. <laughs> oh, how the tables turn for our smug cunt. Much like Gore, some things are far different than you expect when seeing it in person because when Shakespeare saw the massive orgy of rape, violence, and cannibalism in the subway system, if he were to remain lucky, unseen, somehow find a way out of this situation, there was no way Shakespeare would ever be the same again. Shakespeare just sat there in a corner, quietly while watching a man sawing a woman in half and riding her doggy style. Torsos being violated. Decapitations. 
stumps and stab holes being filled. It was a horror show of tits, ass, blood, gore, and power tools. And our rider, who finally reached his limitations when being incapable of finding a proper description for this scene, an orgy of violence. And yet, not enough to describe what was happening before him. It wasn't until Shakespeare heard the sounds of gunshots from the streets above before the orgy broke out and turned its attention to the surface, giving Shakespeare the opportunity to make his escape. Not supposed to use guns in Britain. You can go to jail. Must be Shakespeare's lucky day when some idiot brought a gun with him. For a moment, just a brief moment, Shakespeare was curious as to who was up there in the streets, wondering if Shakespeare should help him or not. But Shakespeare was learning very fast about this new world when leaving the subway, that mysteries don't need answers. Run, move forward, and never look back. Such a coincidence, that all this was happening when he was not far from the river. The Millennium Bridge was always Shakespeare's favorite spot. Even though you can't see much of the obvious stuff, Shakespeare had always appreciated the patchwork of old and new buildings, like a big beautiful mess. It was here, at the middle of the bridge, where Shakespeare proposed to Jen and where she said yes. It was always here where Shakespeare could appreciate the world, living, and seeing London in flames. I guess that was the moment where Shakespeare began to appreciate everything he once had. It was even here where Shakespeare had toyed with the idea that if he had ever wanted to go out, if there was a place where he could just end it all, if things were to go bad, if he could control his own ending, it would be here. At the time, Shakespeare felt like it was the right thing to do when climbing to the top of the bridge, gazing upon the city, which was now in flames. The world is burning. His family, friends, Jen, are all gone. And that was when Shakespeare stepped off and fell into the water below. The killing cold, our lucky cunt, leaving the world under his own terms and welcoming the loving arms of death. <laughs>